Furious Driving, proud to be supported by Diamond Bright, protecting, cleaning and caring for the Furious fleet and for yours with 10% off using code FD10. Bidding Classics, the online classic car marketplace with more cars added every week. And Lancaster Insurance cover the Furious fleet. They are one of the biggest specialist insurers in the UK covering all areas of vintage to modern classic cars and motorbikes. Follow the links in the description below. Welcome to Furious Driving and today is a day of shuffling because we're going to go and reacquire the Rover 420 GSI Tourer which now has an MOT. This was done by my friend Trevor who has a garage slightly further away than the ones I can walk home from so that's why the unfortunately I don't use them for every MOT just simply because it's the logistics of needing to get a lift back. But today we're doing the difficult logistics the easy way by dropping another car there so it's a permanent cycle of cars going to and from. This does unfortunately mean the Volvo has got to go over to the barn and live there for a few days. I was going to put the Punto in the barn. The problem is though, the Rover would then have to live here on the uh, street, on the driveway in front of the house. And that would mean we couldn't use the front door. So the Volvo will have to go into the barn for a few days. But at least that means I'm not going to get any more giant pterodactyl poops like that one on the roof of it. So it looks like it's been vandalized, but it's just massive bird poop. Right, so let's go and get the Volvo into the barn, the Alpha out of the barn, and the Rover 420 back over here. And then we can figure out what we're going to do with it. Okay, so now we are over in the barn. The Volvo is always lovely to drive. It's such a nice, relaxing thing to do. I do need to sort out a couple of little problems though with uh, fuel economy still being terrible. And, uh, well, it's basically it really. <laughs> An ever squeaking fan belt. Can't figure that one out. Now the problem I've got now is that I want to be taking that car out. And to move that car, I need to move this car, this stuff, and this car. I need a different barn. This is... <laughs> This is just silly as why cars in that corner get stuck. This may take a while. When well, stuff's gonna take a while, you need a cup of tea. Hippo's been on charge, so... Purrs into life. I say purr. <laughs> it's a two litre TD. TDI, TD4, sorry. It's kind of tight getting this thing out of here and it's gonna make a horrible noise if it does move at all. Oh, wait, great brakes are off. You can't hear the grinding of the wheel bearing over the sound of the grinding of the brakes, which is super helpful. Oh, I can hear that wheel bearing. I think it's one of the front ones. Right, next to 200, and that means I've got to shuffle this thing around. And putting it on the um, wheel dolly was definitely a good idea. This is the roof tent, which is like 70 or so kilos. So having it on a wheel dolly does make it a lot easier because you need this space here to swing the front of the car around. This one's actually not too hard to get out because it's got a fairly decent turning circle and it's quite short as well, which accounts for a lot in this tight situation. As a little aside, in a recent junk in the trunk, someone sent me through this brilliant Rover R8 slash R3 cup holder, which what you do, you pop out the ashtray they weren't sure it worked on R3, but it does. And it uses the same little guide uh, runners to sit into the uh, ashtray slot. And then you've got yourself a cup holder. Now I don't have the letter that came with it. It's a brilliant idea. I'm gonna say thank you so much, Jack or Jake. I think it might've been the person who sent it in. There we go. And that just sits there and you've got yourself a cup holder. The only modification I think needs to be made to this is, this is there's no end stop. Um, so it can slide back and fall down. So I think what you need to do is to drill a hole in the back or a couple of little holes and put a couple of screws in there just to act, act as um, as backstops that can't go too far back. And then it's basically perfect. A great, useful thing for a Rover R3 slash R8. Talking of junk in the trunk, I have got a whole load of number plates to add to the collection on the wall over here because I've got lots of American, lots of Australian, and they're all scattered in the wrong order now. And I need to put another couple of runs up. There's never a time when I'm not in a rush 
but we'll get onto that very shortly indeed. So thank you to everyone who sent a number plate in because this wall is going to be spectacular. Right, now this is the one that's going to cause me concern as far as getting the thing out because honestly its turning circle is just a joke. Uh, it, people think you can't drive when you're trying to park these things, but the wheels, instead of like on the Rover 200 turning like that much, this one will turn like that much. Oh, it's just hopeless, so getting in and out of here is just hilariously bad. This will take some time. Everything has been on trickle charge. I've got those big Draper chargers, maintenance things, which do at least mean the cars do start easily in here. Right, oh and the mirrors are rubbish as well, the whole lot's absolute pish. Of course, got to get the Volvo back into this slot as well in a minute. Now this is stage one, get it out of this bit, now I can start manoeuvring it into position while I can get around the corner. Oh, this is a ridiculous situation. What I actually need are those dollies that are underneath the mini and the roof tent. In all seriousness, I have actually previously gone out of this car and pushed. I can't see the engine behind it, the Mini, the Acer is at the Mini, is on the floor behind this car. Because I can't actually see the Mini's bonnet down there. I don't know, crunch that. That'll be something. That was the tyre into the roof tent. Back far enough to clear the roof tent. Full lock. Okay, forward again. What you can't see is that I'm literally five centimetres, four centimetres away from the corner of the Mini with a sharp chrome bumper and very solid metal wings which will make a horrible gougy mess of the poor old Alpha if I come into contact with it. Oh, don't roll, don't roll, don't roll. Oh, it's rolling, it's rolling, no, stop. But this is now how close I am to the Mini on this side and I've still got to get through this door frame. I think I got this. There's a slight rise make it hard to push up and then it's a slight incline so then the car starts rolling away so you've got to be really sure it's pointing in the right direction. Yeah this barn does give me sleepless nights. There we go I think we are we're clear we are free Oop, don't roll away. Will the mirror clear? I'm going to go too far over to the other side because then I won't be able to get it out of the um, hallway. There we go. We are free at last. Now it's going to put everything back in again. Well, that was a relaxing way to spend a few minutes. At least I can drop out of here now. And we are in. This is the easiest one to manoeuvre in all honesty, incredible as it may seem, because it's the biggest. Now, I really have got to go and get a nice vintage look Swedish flag and a vintage look Italian flag to go alongside these. So partly because it helps with the acoustics and also so I look less, a bit less jingoistic when I come in under my uh, UK flag in here. Anyway, right, let's get the uh, 200 VI back in here. So we are done and it's only taken, what, 45 minutes or so to extract the Alpha from the back of the barn and get the uh, Volvo back in its place. And um, yes, so there we are. All good to go. Now I can go and take the car for its MOT. I'm not in favor of biannual MOTs, but with this level of faff, I can see an advantage. I just need to make a change to this one, as that is no longer expired MOT. 
that can now be added to, I think it passed yesterday, so that'll be, I'll call it the 5th of the 6th, 24. It is June, isn't it, still? I've no clue what the day is. Right. And it is taxed as well. My green pen is in the glass cupboard behind the engine. <laughs> 200, I actually thought was um, taxed, and it wasn't. So it's lucky I didn't drive it. I should probably tax someone for this month. Right, let's get out of here. Oh, I never get tired of hearing a twin spark fire up. A little chirp, 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 and then a muted, muted growl. Right, so I've just called into a shell station on the way to the MOT garage, because the last couple of MOTs I've done, I've struggled with emissions and the thing I've had to do is dump in some V-Power which has got loads of cleaning additives and higher octane and stuff give the car a bit of a Italian tune-up and then it's uh, solved the problem so it's pre empted this time four gallons of V-Power on top of the uh, stuff that's in there already and we can get on the road and get this thing delivered and they want the 420 collected yay well oh, this thing drives well I do think this might need a new clutch though because um, it does kind of just slip a tiny bit as you pull away. I think a new clutch plate might be in this car's future before too long. This thing is just so good to drive. You don't forget, but it's nice to be reminded. There are bad things obviously. The mirrors are useless, the seat is way too high and the leg position is kind of weird. But the noise it makes, uh, and the Keep way it accelerates and everything, oh, nothing quite like it. It just feels a bit more solid and a bit more special than perhaps the Rover does. The Rover 420 that I'm going to go and collect now. Really does need the air conditioning sorting out though. suspension too because damn this thing wallows needs the air conditioning fixing as I just said but also one good thing is that I fitted that a Toto double din head unit thing which means I can listen to my phone on the drive over so I've got a few minutes to kill so I can do that which is nice we'll rejoin when we get there Right, so here we are, we've made it into the countryside to leave the Alpha for its MOT. We're fingers crossed, having checked every little thing we possibly can in the barn, everything will work and, as I say, fingers crossed, I'll go and find a block of wood to touch. Here we go, let's take no chances, let's salute a magpie as well if we can, touch some wood, it will pass without any issue. And here's the 400, which apparently has passed as well, so we can drive this one home and see what we think of that. Right, so we're in the 420 GSI Tourer, which unfortunately, uh, my friend who did the work on the car wasn't here to ask about how hard it was but I suspect it put up a fight and looking under the back wheels I can see there are fresh nuts and bolts going through the rear arms and uh, his wife did have to have to drive it briefly and she actually said that she dropped a Maserati off and this was actually the more entertaining drive which says a lot really doesn't it people who drive an awful lot of knowing what they drive, very interesting cars. So anyway, now we've got the car back, it's got a clean bill of health, admittedly, it does still have a long list of advisories, which obviously it's not going to have gone away because we haven't put new brake discs on, we haven't changed the tires. Um, there's still mentions of, um, sort of corrosion on the fuel and brake lines and things. It's all stuff that has kind of been on the list of stuff to do, but isn't really bad enough to keep the car off the road. It's just stuff we need to sort out in the future. And the crazy thing is, this car drives so well. I mean, my coupe looks so much better on the top and underneath, but this thing drives actually better than the coupe. The problem is getting all this out now. What do I do? I said the other day I was over it, I wanted to get rid of it. 
and just be gone and out of my life, but it just drives so well. It, it is very frustrating how this car is so good and yet so bad. On the one hand, I just want it gone, out of my life, more, less stress to worry about. <laughs> On the other hand, I don't want to see it go in an unfinished, incomplete situation where I know all I've got to do is just change the discs and the brakes, change a few pipes, and then change a few bushes and the car is basically as good as new, and then obviously go on with the paint. Um, and if I were to keep it, that is fantastic content as well, so what do you do? I don't know if I can still run poles anywhere or not. Keep the car, get rid of the car. Who knows? Get a bigger barn and just come back to it <laughs> another day. And obviously bigger barn is the best solution. And it also would appear that the V-Power did the trick with the poor idling, because uh, it got through the idle test of the MOT and the emissions test without any issues as well, so all good there. Right, let's get this thing home. This is a fun thing to drive. The power steering is just so perfectly weighted. And the ride on this car is really nice. I want to, ride, I want to lower it. I've always wanted to lower it from the word go because it is sitting abnormally high. But it does ride so well. So, here we have a road legal, road safe, road fun Rover 420 back on the road against all probability events to all common sense it's here it's alive it's driving and it's huge huge fun a properly well practical classic to invoke the name of that esteemed tome now the question is what do we do with it before we do that there is a couple of things as i say first of all i'm so happy to have this thing mot because this is now tested um, and legal. The Alpha 145 is off to get its ticket as well. So that means most of the cars are actually running because occasionally people come and say, oh, you know, your cars don't all work. Well, yeah, a couple of them don't, but they're projects, they're long-term projects like the restoration of a barn fine W123, long-term project, changing the V8 on the Rover um, P6, long-term project. Both of those two are getting close to completion, so they're not stagnating. Um, the only ones that should be on the road that aren't, really, are the 2000, because I've not time to go and sort out this mysterious bad earth thing. Uh, the Rover Coupe, because of the mysterious, not very mysterious, actually, the gas gets chucking all down the front of the engine. Um, in terms of moderns, that's kind of it, really. Everything else is, is working. And often it's only sort of tax or MOT that's stopping me putting cars on the road. And this is one more that's back on the street. Now, more significantly though, this isn't a winch. This is something you probably can't see on camera quite as clearly as you can if you see the car in real life. The thing is, a lot of people comment, why don't you A, wrap the car, or B, just sand, lightly sand and re-lacquer it. And to, both of those have the same reason to say no, can't do that. Because, well, the lacquer is gone, obviously, in all over the entire car. In a couple of places, like the door tops, you could get away in a small area of taking these window wipe rubbers off, sanding it, re-lacquering it, and get away with just sorting those doors out. However, it is just going everywhere. It's gonna keep on going further down as time goes on, so that's not a long-term fix. But more importantly, under the paint, where the lacquer's gone and the red paint has bleached, this is porous. So in places it's etched, it's properly, properly etched. So you can be sanding basically down to the undercoat before you find a good surface to paint to. So it's, it's, counter, well, it's not gonna happen. But more importantly, there is surface rust in places uh, on these when it's leading edge up here, quite bad around this arch down here. And um, more significantly on this C post and around the tailgate. So it's all got trapped rust under the paint. It's not significant. It's stuff we can nip in the bud very easily indeed at this point but you can't just paint over it. You've got to take it out and then deal with it. Likewise, wrapping, if I was to wrap the car, um, it would just trap it underneath here. And also when you wrap stuff, you've got to have a minty clean surface. So it would just be all bubbly and horrible. It would look just, just terrible. And frankly, it would cost more than painting it properly in the first place. Wrapping is really expensive. It's not the cheap fix people imagine. So yeah, what do we do? Do we keep hold of the car as a project? Um, even though I've made a decision that the car has got to be sold, it's loads of work, it's, an absolute, it's going to cost an absolute fortune and it's probably going to get to the point that the full bring this back to the point I want it to be with suspension brakes, wheels, sort out all the bushes that are advisories on it for next time, um, then sort out all the paintwork, that's going to cost a couple of thousand pounds. On a good day this car, probably you know, all finished up, well, <laughs> indicator's fallen out, um, it's probably worth about three grand and it's going to cost <laughs> probably all of that and more to make it. However, we're not doing it for profit. 
I just want to get the car looking good. Doing it for love. And for content, obviously. Let's, let's be realistic, it's all for content. So I've got to do stuff to keep the car being worked on. So I don't know, what are you going to do? Answers in the comments. Something's got to go, because I'm really I'm out of storage. When the V8 comes back out of um, CCK Historic, where they have finally isolated the last problem with the engine, and I think they just overwhelmed work and haven't had time to talk anything out, where am I going to put the stuff? I, I need a car or two to, to not be here just for space alone. Or can someone offer me some space to store things? That would solve things anyway. Anyway, what do you th let me know what you reckon. So, on the good news, one MOT down, second MOT about to be down. Car running great. Car looking shocking as always, but car running great. So, <laughs> so there we go. Let me know in the comments what you think. Should I keep this? Should I maybe sell the 75 instead? The 75 is a really, really nice car. But the thing about that, it just feels like I'm driving a very interesting modern car rather than a classic. And I think the direction I would like to go with the, the collection as such is a bit more older stuff that's pre-1983, so tax-free, because I'm spending so much on road tax. And although my real kind of, a lot of my interest is in 80s, 90s cars, you have to pay to run them. And if you get over 40 years old, I've not got to worry about ULEs either. Although part of the point of my collection of fleet was to preserve cars for the future. So when these things hit 40, they won't have all gone. There's only 15, 16, 17 or so of these 420 Tourers left, which is just insane. So let me know what you think in the comments. I'm going to go and maybe I'll give this a wash. So it probably needs a hoover. Um, but yeah, like, subscribe, do your usual business. I'll see you again next time doing something completely different.